On today's episode, we are unraveling the secrets of creating an extraordinary retirement. My guest today is David Edmiston. He is a financial advisor, but not just any financial advisor. David is not someone who just crunches the numbers, but delves deep into the heart of what truly makes a retirement great. We will be exploring the questions so many financial advisors do not ask. What does a great retirement truly look like? We talk about why it is so critical to have that piece in place before you retire. And we'll talk about why that question is just as important as other questions that we ask, like, will I outlive my money? It's about how your wealth becomes a driving force propelling you forward towards a retirement that exceeds your wildest dreams. So if you're ready to embark on a journey to truly retire your limits, join us as I welcome the insightful David Edmiston to the podcast. Welcome to Retire Your Limits, the podcast for women who are ready to rewrite the rule books and redefine what it means to retire. I'm your host, Gayla Beyer, nurse practitioner turned wellness coach for retiring women. Now planning this next chapter of our lives can be overwhelming. At least I know it was for me. This podcast is about putting you first, challenging the norms, and unlocking what's possible for you as you step into this new era of retirement. So ready to retire your limits? Let's dive in. Hi, David. Welcome to the podcast. Hi, Gayla. How are you today? Thank you so much for having me as your guest. Yes. So tell us a little bit about you. Yeah, so I work as a as a financial planner, run my own firm. Um, personally, I just turned fifty this year. I'm married. I have eight kids. Uh, we have two acres. We live in Prescott, Arizona area. If you're familiar with it, about an hour and a half north of Phoenix. Lots of great hiking and kayaking here. Um, we're kind of homestead minded. We have chickens and goats and a big garden. And uh, most of my time, we homeschool our kids. So a lot of our time is just spent investing in, in raising. A, you know, we we say that we're not raising kids. We're training adults. So that, that's a full-time job outside of my professional stuff. Oh, you are busy. We are. Yep, that's for sure. Raising eight kids, homeschooling, uh, running a homestead, and having a new uh, a new business on top of it. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Never a dull moment, that's for sure. But it, it, it's so much fun. Yep. It, 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 we have an absolute blast every day. That's awesome. Yes, I'm really excited to speak with you today about women who are retiring and making financial plans around their retirement and the questions that come up around how they are going to spend their retirement money. And one of the things that I was most intrigued with your perspective on financial planning is you really look at the money as a vehicle for helping women to live their best life. Can you tell me then how you came to practice this way? Sure, absolutely. Um, so, so as you know, I run my own financial planning firm. It's called Next Phase Financial Planning. I've been an advisor for about 17 years and launched my own firm uh, in August of 2022. So about a year and a half, well, year and a quarter ago. I think, you know, working as an advisor, I've helped people into retirement for years and a lot of financial planning talk just gets to focus on investments and retirement income. And it, it, a lot of advisors, a lot of people just kind of stops there. And I've always viewed money as just a tool to help you live your best life. And it, like you said, it's a vehicle, it, it's a means to an end, but it's not an end in, in and of itself. And over the years that I've worked with people, I've seen different situations. I've seen people who really had a, a clear idea of what they wanted to do in retirement. They wanted to, you know, RV around the country, or they wanted to buy a boat and live on the lake, or they wanted to go see their grandkids. And to me, knowing what you want to accomplish and what you want to do with your life is the starting point, because the money and the decisions you make have to support that. And so for me personally, I don't get a lot of personal satisfaction, just saying like you have X number of dollars more than you did in the past. What I get excited about when my clients tell me, hey, because you helped us, we just got to go do blank. And that was really impactful for us. And so I think for a lot of women who are planning retirement, a lot more time needs to be spent on thinking what retirement looks like. What do we want to do? What dreams do we have? What new opportunities do we have? Rather than just are the investment markets going to like help us or not help us? So, so I've, I've always really enjoyed, you know, digging in with my clients, learning about what they're, what's really meaningful in their lives, and then coming up with a plan to help them achieve that. 
I love that. So uh, when I was planning my retirement early on, I did not want to outlive my money. And sure. this is what I hear from so many women. That's the focus is, do I have enough money? And and they're relying on a financial advisor to tell them that. Go Sorry, I, I was going to say, I, um, I didn't mean to interrupt. I, I was going to say, I think that, that that is important, right? They can The first consideration is before you step out of your job, do you have enough means to actually do that without putting yourself in, in some kind of jeopardizing your, your future at some point down the road? Um, but I think the life questions have to be a part of that because some of those decisions, it may change how you approach things. You know, a quick example, let's say you're in a position where you can retire before you're 59 and a half, like, like you've worked hard, you, you've got a good salary and a, any financial advisor can do some calculations, to say, yes, you won't run out of money. But what comes into that is if you're going to use your money when you're 56, that's going to affect the decisions, right? A lot of, of 401ks and normal retirement accounts have penalties if you need to use them before 59 and a half. So you need to understand what you want to do because one of the options when you're 50 might be let's get some money into a savings account or a brokerage account that doesn't have early withdrawal penalties because my life says I want to retire when I'm 56. But the structure of my retirement account says if you do that, you're going to get penalties from all these other resources. And if you're not thinking about what your life needs to look like, you might miss some of those decisions. And that's a, a much more sophisticated way of making decisions than just, do I have enough to not worry about running out of money? Yeah, we have to check that box. But we also need to think about when am I going to use money? When do I need at different stages? And retirement's usually not linear. There's going to be points in your retirement where your expenses are high or taxes are high. There's going to be times when it's lower. And you need to understand what that kind of cash flow timeline, how your life progresses and your needs change, because it's not as simple as I have a X number of dollars and I'm going to take out the exact same amount every year. And am I okay or not? It's like, okay, well, what's going to change? And how do we plan for that? And how do we use your resources in the most effect effective manner? And so, um, yes, we need to not run out of money, but there's a lot of other decisions that are part of that discussion. What I realized is that answer completely depends on how I choose to li live the next 30 years <laughs> or however long right. there is left, right? Yeah. Why is, why is that the most asked question? Yeah. I, I think when you get to the stage of, of actually considering retirement, it's, it's a very scary process. Right? When you get to the point of I'm no longer receiving an income, all I have to rely on is what I've already saved and invested up to this point, and there's no more coming in other than, you know, say Social Security, that, that's emotionally, that can be a very scary decision. Gary, you know, the idea that there's no longer a paycheck, I can't work more hours, I can't earn more bonuses, I can't go get another job. I have to now take everything that I've worked hard on my whole life and make this work for me. And the decisions are much more complex. When we're, when we're accumulating for retirement, when we're saving money for retirement, it's really two or three questions. How much am I going to save? Am I saving enough? And what are my savings doing? Am I invested in a 401k or mutual fund or just putting away under the mattress? And that's the extent of the questions is just, am I saving enough? And what am I doing with the money that I've saved? When we get to retirement, now there's a lot of complexity. How much do I actually need to support my lifestyle? What happens if there's unexpected challenges or opportunities? Do I have enough to weather a storm or jump on this great opportunity that I may not have considered? What's the tax impact of every dollar that I'm using and have I planned effectively for that so that the money I worked my whole life to save that I'm I'm using it, not the government? Um, there's There's just a lot more decisions that go into that. And then there's things like what are the markets doing and inflation and all the normal financial stuff. So it gets to be a lot more complicated. And I think for most people, they want that, that reassurance. Most of the clients I work with, a lot of them come to me within a few years of retirement. They want to have a professional, just that reassurance that somebody else sees it through the right lens and can say, yes, you're going to be okay. Like you, you can do this. And I think once that is established, then we can make a plan to take action steps to address all the other complexities. But I think before you turn in your pink slip, so to speak, um, you want that reassurance. I think anybody does. I think women in particular, but I think anybody really needs to know like, yes, I've done enough homework to know that I can do this and it's going to be okay. And then we can look forward to what comes next. 
So what I'm hearing is that the that number one question is really based in fear of the unknown. And what we're looking for with that question is reassurance that we're going to be okay. I think a lot of us want guarantees and certainty. And that's always that's not always possible, particularly when you're thinking about financial decisions that are going to span, you know, 30 years. Um, and I think we also have a false sense of security of our current needs, right? Like, like if you've ever been through a, a layoff or a job transition or a life transition, you, you know that things that seemed very secure can change very quickly. And I think that question of, am I, am I going to have enough money? Am I not going to outlive that? that? That's natural because when you're walking away from your income, you, you want to be prudent. But I think you also have to understand that, that it's a transition, that each year we're reviewing things and making adjustments just like you do when you're working. And just like your job is a great paycheck, but then it could be gone because somebody in the tower somewhere cut your division in, you know, in, in a business decision and, and that can disappear very quickly. In retirement, it's less that you're going to be out of money. If you've saved well, it's more about how are we making adjustments and tracking our progress and being smart about the decisions we're making. And a lot of people that I work with also need to understand that the first couple of years is really a transition period. I haven't met hardly anybody that actually spent the exact number of dollars they thought they were going to spend their first year in retirement. The market and the economy do different things and, you know, life throws us different curveballs and it's okay. It doesn't mean that your plans are off or that you made a mistake. It's more about things change. So let's be flexible. Let's build a plan that as much as we can control, let's analyze that and make wise decisions and operate within what is in our control, knowing that there's always going to be some things that aren't, but that they're not going to be devastating if you've planned well. They just may require adjustments along the way. It's a transition, right? There's all sorts of changes that can happen. Um, so that brings me to my second question for you, and that is that I know that you or that you've talked about how important it is to have an idea of how you want to spend your your retirement so that that money can work for you. It can be a tool or a vehicle to help you do that. In your mm-hmm. practice, how do you help women to first understand that kind of having an idea of what you want to do is important? And then how to formulate that? Yeah, that, that's a great question. I, I, I spend a lot of time, especially when I first get to meet with clients, asking them about you know what their life looks like now and what they would really want it to change to. It kind of, let's take money off the table. What's the ideal scenario look like? Right? If we had all the money to support it, what would you want to do? And there can be financial implications of that. So if I have clients who have you know, kids and grandkids spread out all over the country. We talk about, well, how often, you know, what's your relationship like? How often do you want to visit your, your family? Where do you need to travel to? Do they come see you? Do you see them, right? And so after we've had that discussion and say, okay, do we want to do more or less of that? What's that cost look like, right? So we can put a financial number to that life decision, but we need to understand that. Same thing with people who want to take cruises or who want to start a business and, or consult and do different things to still be proactive or if they want to volunteer and get on a board in a local nonprofit and that's really going to drive them. I, I really I try to understand for my clients, you now have this open window of time. So the money decision is part of it, but time is a really big factor when it comes to retirement because we had 30, 40, 50, 60 hours going into our career for a very long period of time, depending on what you do. And now there's this vacuum that I don't have to show up at the office. I don't have to report to anybody. I don't have to keep the the candles burning in the in the workspace. So a lot of people can really get depressed and miss an opportunity if they haven't thought ahead. There, there are studies that actually show people that don't plan for how they're going to fulfill their sense of purpose, have health issues, have really dissatisfying retirements. It leads to depression. It leads to lower lifespan. So, this, so there's a, a direct like life quality and lifespan correlation to how much you think about what you're going to do in retirement. And what I love in in my business as far as the financial planning is when we talk through that and we have deep conversations about what's important for my clients in their life and ask them some questions that they may not have asked themselves. Like, like you've got Monday through Friday, nine to five is now open. What do you tell me? What, how is it? How is that time going to be spent? The clients I work with, the people that I work with that take the time to think through that one, they can get excited. It's kind of like when you plan a vacation. If you know what you're looking forward to, you start making plans. Oh, we'll go here. We'll go see this site. And, and there's the same correlation with retirement. So it creates a positive energy, which is, which is really great just emotionally. 
But then the financial decision to become so much easier. Okay, I do want to go on that cruise to Greece and that's going to cost me 15 grand. Great. Let's plan for that, right? Or yes, I'm going to go volunteer and the local art council. I'm going to spend a lot of time there. I'm going to have a lot of connections and there's probably dinners and things that I'm going to have to do. Okay, great. Let's plan for that. And I think the way I help my clients engage in that is we talk a lot outside the numbers. And I try to frame that as the first thing we talk about when I sit down with somebody is, tell me about your life. Tell me who you are. Let's talk about what your life is going to look like when you make this transition. And then the numbers can all come in to kind of support that plan. Oh my gosh. That's incredible. When you're helping somebody with their life savings, it's a huge responsibility. And I've found that this kind of dialogue helps in two ways. Some people who have been very good savers and have always been kind of good with their money, have good financial habits, sometimes overemphasize how much they need to protect their money. And having that dialogue, okay, what what would a great retirement look like? Well, I'd love to go on three cruises a year, not two, but I don't know if I can afford that. Well, we can show you, yeah, you can afford that, right? Like, like there's a lot of times where I have clients who come with a little bit of fear about what they're going to spend. And when we talk through what life would really look like if it was great, and then we crunch the numbers, we've actually been able to, quote unquote, give permission for people to spend more than they thought. And by the same token, there's a few people that I've worked with that the numbers really don't work, right? And I think that's important too. You want to have make an informed decision wherever you stand. And so we've been able to talk through, okay, what does a great life look like? Okay, it's going to cost X. We only have Y resources. Maybe we need to look at making some adjustment. And I've actually had a couple of clients who thought they were ready to retire. And when we really looked like what a great retirement was going to look like, like they came to the conclusion, just looking at the analysis with me, I really need to work two more years and get myself to that position where I feel comfortable doing that. I don't feel comfortable now. And so whether it's permission to spend or, or maybe we need to do a little bit more work before we get there, it's clarifying. And again, when we tie our money to what we're going to do in life, because it's going to get tied there just by life, you're going to spend the money on what you spend it on. It's just a matter of being thoughtful. And then I find that I and my clients get a lot more positive energy when we're like, okay, we know what this, what goals we're working toward. Yes. So starting with the question, what does a great retirement or a great life look like for you? One of the things that I come across um, in my coaching is that there are some women who don't know what they want their retirement to look like. They've been so focused on their careers. They've been so busy. They're so stressed and so exhausted that they really have no idea what they want to do. Do you come across that? And if so, how do you maneuver that situation? Yeah, that's that's a great question, Gail. And and that's that's true. You know, some people are dreamers and more visionary. And some people are just kind of like, I've just had this in front of me for so long. I know I'm want to be done with this. And I kind of think of the escape mentality, like I don't want to work this hard anymore. But then what comes next is it's sometimes harder for people to articulate. And in those cases, I still ask my clients the same types of questions and ask them, like, if you're not sure, that's okay. But why don't we give this some thought? And let's revisit this at a, at a certain after you've given that some thought. The other thing that I think is important is to understand that retirement, and you said this earlier, it's not a fixed point in time. It's not a like, We do our retirement plans where we can dry around day X and that's it. Life is fluid and six months from now, 12 months from now, 18 months from now, you may have different ideas about what you want to do. I worked with a client last year who who retired and most of her drive to retirement was, um, she lives in Utah, big skiing, hiking person, and all of her friends had retired a little bit before she did. So they're constantly like, we're going to the slopes, we're going on this great hike, can you come? And she said, no, I've got work. And that finally built up to a point where she's like, you know what? I'm missing out on what's important to me at the expense of my career. So we did the number she's, she's set for retirement. And she told me at first, she said, you know, I think I'll probably do some consulting. The people that I work with are, are really great and they, they value my expertise. So I'll probably engage in some manner, maybe not full time, but do this. And we talked six months after she retired and I asked her, you know, have you, have you done any consulting, reconnected with work? Do you have any desire? Nope. Nope. I'm great. I'm loving this freedom. I would never go back. And she didn't know that when we made the retirement decision and when she stepped out of the office, but months of experience, she's now been able to find out what she values more. And the engagement in the workspace was something she had wrapped up and the engagement with the, just the flexibility that she had now was much more meaningful to her, but that wasn't something she saw at first. And so I find a lot of people, if they don't have a clear vision of what I'll do next, that's okay. 
Let's make space for you to explore. Let's make space for you to transition. Let's make sure the money numbers, you're not making a poor decision to retire. But if you if the money works where you're not going to run out of funds, then use that time to explore. And if I sit down with a client, I don't really know what an ideal t- retirement looks like. I just know I don't want to be in the office. Great. Let's start there. Give yourself time to explore. You have the freedom of time. You have the freedom to have your expenses covered. Now go explore and really find out what's meaningful for you. And that's a discussion we're going to have every year. You know, what's what's wonderful for you at 60 might be different when you're 65, might be different when you're 70, might be different six months from now. But giving yourself permission to explore and to develop that passion for what you want to do, that's important for a lot of people. And not everybody has a crystal clear vision. You know, some do, but I find a lot of people, it's more like, well, I'll probably just do what I do today just without work. Okay. Try that for a while and let's see what comes next. Yeah. So that brings up the point that every single person is an individual and their retirement process is going to be unique to them. What I find around this is just the level of self-awareness they may have around what is really meaningful or important to them at this stage in their lives when they've been so focused on their career, you know. Yeah. Not really able to to expand their thinking or their feeling enough to see what's possible for them as they move into this next stage and what you're what you're creating for them is that space to be able to think about wow, you know, what would a great retirement look like? Just allowing that freedom and space for someone to take the time to think about that and really feel what would be right in that moment. Um, And knowing that this is a transition, which is the second thing that I thought was so important that you said, just because you decide to retire from your main career role right now does not mean that you're done working forever. (laughs) And I think that's another thing that's kind of been a traditional retirement model but that so many women now are moving in and out of the workforce. It's so funny that you say that. I mean, I I remember distinctly one client that I had that had retired and um, is a married couple. And the husband was was just an accomplisher, right? Like just an achiever. And they moved, retired, moved closer to the grandkids. And like three months in retirement, he's like, I'm going crazy. I can't, I need to put this energy that I have and this creativity and this achiever mindset that I have into something. And he actually went up going back to work in the, for a certain period of time. But I think that we have things that come from working. We have our accomplishment. We have our social networks. We have the people that we see. We have a role and and a purpose and a fulfillment. And we all have to find that in some different ways. And that's going to look different for every single person. You know, some people are going to be perfectly happy never working a day in their life again. And that's why they got to this point. And others really want to contribute. And that can take a lot of different forms. I also think, too, beyond like the conversations I have with clients, work that you do, coaches, mentors, like you don't have to go into retirement alone. And I think that's another message that people sometimes forget is like my retirement plans, my one money conversation once a year with my financial advisor, and then I just figure it out. And it's like, no, you know, A, a financial advisor should be much more involved on a more frequent basis about life, not just money. But I think if you need help with visioning or just understanding how do I develop a life plan, a coach like yourself that, that helps with mindfulness and, and really thinking about life planning helps with that. And so connecting with other women who are further down the road in retirement or who are, are excelling in an area that you're unsure about. I think, you know, again, we, we do better in community, whatever that looks like. And so I think that they, that you have to. Seek that out to a certain extent, but also give yourself permission to say, it's not all on my shoulders. Like, this is my life, but let me bring in the people that you need to help you. I love that. Um, The reason I love that is because women our age, 60s, we don't really have a lot of role models for how women who have been in the workforce, career women for the majority of their careers, how they spend this next, what could potentially be a whole third of their life. And the truth is there are women in their 80s and even early 90s who are still really active, still actually working to some degree. Women are playing tennis in their 80s and playing pickleball and and so we need to seek out these role models to be able to have that inspiration. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and I think the just getting active 
right? If you, if you're a pickleballer or a hiker or a kayaker or whatever it does, if you can go, you know, I, I actually participate in a local hiking meetup group and there's just meetup groups around our area. We live in a, in a great area for, for hiking and bike trailing. Just going in those and the conversations you have along the way of doing that activity, you learn some really fascinating stuff. And, and there's just people whose lives and perspectives are so interesting. And just making those connections and taking that first step to go participate, you know, at the very least, you're going to get whatever that activity that you like doing. You're going to get an hour of that time, two hours of that time. But the people that you connect with, you all of a sudden start realizing like, oh, this person's you know three years older than me. They're doing this really fascinating thing. That sounds interesting. Let me learn more about that. Or they're sharing some other you know, wisdom about something that they, you know, sidestep that was important. So I think connecting with other people in whatever that venue looks like is so important because you gain perspective, you gain wisdom, you can build friendships and support groups. And, and if you're not naturally already in community, it takes a little bit of initiative, but it can be really beneficial, even in a very subtle commitment way to start just learning about other people. And, and I think retirement is one of those things that it's so wide open. It can be whatever you want it to be, right? And if you have a very clear picture of what you want it to be, go make it that. If you're not sure, that's okay too. Yes, I love that. So what I'm gathering from this so far is that if we're coming upon our retirement age and we're thinking about fi our finances, first of all, can I retire? Am I going to? Out am I not going to outlive my money? And then mm -hmm. when we hear ourselves asking that question, that's coming out of some fear and that we can get some reassurance around that. But it's at the same point, it's not a fixed yes or no answer that there is, there is going to be some variability in there depending on how we're going to live our lives. And then the second thing is to think about how we want to spend our retirement. What does a great retirement look like? And then Think about this money that you've earned as a tool or a vehicle to help you get there. And then yeah. the third thing that I've gotten out of this conversation so far, far is that um, this is a transition. Retirement is a transition. It's not a fixed date for most people. For some, it is. But for many people, it can be a transition. It doesn't have to be a fixed date. So I think that that's freeing for people to think, okay, I can try this out. And if I don't love it, or if I love parts of it, I can make a shift. I love your example of your client who thought she would pivot into some sort of a part-time role. And once she got to doing that, she was like, heck with this, I'm, a <laughs> I'm hitting the slopes. Yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, it, it's been it's been so exciting to see that. And and, yeah, and the only other thing I'd yeah. add, Gayla, is, is is sometimes we wait too long. We wait till retirement's right upon us, and then it's like, oh, I've got to figure out my money and my life, and, and we we create this short window, right? But these kinds of thoughts and discussions can happen for months, years. So I would just encourage your audience, anybody that that's thinking about this, have some discussions and and do some of this thinking and coaching early, so that. Like anything in life, if we're informed and we're educated, then we can make a, a, a wise decision. But if we try to cram all that education into too narrow of a window, it can be overwhelming. So around what t kind of a time frame would you suggest for that? Uh, you know, five years, three years, 10 years. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think I think three to five years before you're really thinking of your retirement date is a great time to plan. Um, for two reasons. One, again, it just like looking forward to a vacation. The more time you spend thinking about what's next and you're, what you're going to enjoy about what's next, the more positive energy and positive mental space you get around it. You get excited towards it instead of kind of dreading it, making those decisions. There's also can be times where making different financial decisions, redirecting money to different types of accounts or building up a, a proper amount of cash savings so you can have money to already set aside to spend so that if the market crashes the day you return in your notice, you're not like regretting your retirement decision. There are some financial moves that might take six months, 12 months, 18 months, two years to accomplish if you need to restructure things. So I, I think the three years before retirement is a really good place to, to start thinking deeply about it. Yeah. Three years seems like a good sweet spot because if you're too far out, then you, you have even less of an idea of what you want to do. In retirement. I mean, we change, right? Our values change. What becomes important changes over time. And of course, it would continue to be evolving. But I think you have a better sense when you're, you know, closer in three years or so. So that sounds good. 
Yeah. So um, it's, when you're working with someone, say maybe three years out, and they're you're kind of trying to plan, you know, the next few years to get them ready to make this transition. Tell me how you uh, go about that process. Yeah, um, that's great. So I think that the, the conversations about life are very similar no matter what stage, you know, we're talking about, okay, what does life look like out when you reach that retirement point? What are you going to do next? What's that going to cost? What do you want to accomplish? I think with the, the financial decisions, there's a lot of tools available in those first few years of retirement. For, for my clients, I always like to make sure they have 18 months of their expenses set aside in cash, not in the stock market, not in investments, but in cash. Again, the, the thing I always hear is the, the kind of joke when the 08 market crash is like, oh, I was going to retire in 08 and I did. And then I hated it because the market went down. And it's like the money you're going to spend in your first year or two of retirement shouldn't be attached to the stock market because now the stock market is controlling your retirement. You should have that set aside securely so you can leave that job confidently and know there's a whole year's worth of money set aside that now you can go live your life and the, what's going on in the economy and inflation and what the Fed says and all these things that people worry about, like, like you've isolated yourself from the impact of that. And, and you're using, you're dedicating a specific amount of money for a specific time frame and in the right vehicle to, to accomplish that. The other thing that becomes important is three years out from retirement, especially if you're over 50, there's things like catch-up contributions. You can contribute a lot more money to your HSA account or your 401k or your IRA. So you have these vehicles that the government is allowed to really like, you know, stuff the mattress with more savings money in a bigger way once you've gotten over 50. So looking at, okay, how do we, how do we hit that sprint into our savings before we retire? If you have executive compensation, how you elect when you'll receive your stock options or your deferred comp payouts, like some of those elections are, are really important that you make the right decision and they have timing and tax impacts. So not waiting till you get there, but really being proactive to use those to the best of your ability, that becomes really important. And, and that's, that's a lot of discussion on the financial side I have with clients is, okay, let's look at the available resources. We've got a few years. Let's set this up in a plan that's going to optimize everything you have put you in the best position to step into that confidently rather than waiting too long and then wishing we had done different things and now we've missed opportunities. Great. So the first thing you're recommending is 18 months emergency fund um, that's in mm -hmm. cash somewhere. What vehicles do you recommend for cash? Yeah, for cash, I'm a big fan of, of a quality online high yield savings account. So there's several big banks that, that are, okay. are well known, not the bank I've never heard of, but when you use an online savings account, the interest rates right now, I mean, you're getting a very competitive 4 to 5% interest rate in a lot of cases, so your money's still working for you. But you, yeah. the important thing is accessibility because this is money you're going to spend. So I don't like to see clients tie that up in a CD that they would have, get penalties for. I don't like it in bonds or stocks because then the value fluctuates. But doing better than the local big bank's regular savings account that pays you point nothing and money that you can access within a few days, that's a great thing for that. And without getting into too many specifics beyond that, I like to have clients have a couple more years worth of spending in short-term fixed income vehicles, stuff that may fluctuate a little bit, but again, not in the stock market. Our stock money is five-year plus money because the stock market has shown it'll go up and down every day, but long-term, your best chance to have your money grow in the stock market is to leave it in the stock market for a long time. And so you want to structure these buckets, yes. you know, a cash bucket, a short-term bucket, and then a long-term growth bucket and only need those monies at different intervals. Yes. Yes. The buckets. Yeah. Yep. That's correct. So then they're coming upon the retirement date. Um, and then how do you help them in that first year of mm -hmm. retirement when oh, they're making decisions about tax issues that come up? There's sometimes mm -hmm. going to be costs for health care that comes up. Yeah, um, there, there's kind of three components to that. One is, is having a, a really dedicated retirement income plan. So if we've done the work to talk through what a great retirement looks like, we do put a number on that each month. Okay, so this is the money we need each month for everything that you're going to do in your great retirement. And we set that 18-month reserve to match that, and we set up the investments to be providing income. So a lot of, you know, if you're retiring 60, we're probably before Medicare, we're before Social Security. So this is coming from your assets. So we're going to use cash to fill that monthly spending. And I want my clients to be very secure that the money you plan to spend every month, it's already there. We have a process to refill the cash bucket as you spend it. 
there's automatic transfer set up from you know one account to the other to your checking account so that the the confidence is the money's there for me to spend so that's number one so we go into retirement cash flow is there your budget is set you can spend this and we've got some extra if things change then we spend a lot of time i go through all my clients tax returns to understand of the available resources what's the most tax efficient way to take that money out should it be coming from an ira are we over 59 and a half so we're avoiding penalties do we want to leave that to grow tax deferred and use other resources? So a, a tax aware retirement income plan so that we're pulling out of the right buckets in the way that's going to not necessarily save you taxes this year, but give you the best tax results over your lifetime. And so that might mean converting yes. some pre-tax to a Roth if that's going to save you taxes in the future. And so the tax planning is part of it. And then the healthcare decisions, a lot of this, especially with with since the ACA, a lot of my clients do use ACA subsidies and have to keep their income under a certain level to qualify for a discount on their medical plan. And so there's this marriage of what's more valuable. Is a cheaper health plan premium the better result for you or is paying a little bit more for health care but getting some other tax advantages that could be worth more of your wealth over time? And so that's kind of an individual analysis for each client. But I'm, I'm for, in my mind, I want my clients to know their their risks are covered. They've got health care. They've got, you know, other insurance if needed so that if life throws us terrible things, we've we're covered without destroying our nest egg. That they have the money to spend exactly what they need every month so they don't have to be worrying about that. And then where we can, let's optimize taxes, let's optimize investments so that we're growing and competing against inflation. Now that's that sounds great. So one last thing I wanted to ask you was a lot of women don't have a financial planner that they trust. So they have a lot of fear around finding a financial planner. Do, should they go to a fee-only financial planner? Should they have someone manage their assets? So can you talk to that a little bit and about how women can feel comfortable and trusting in getting financial advice? Yeah, that's a great question. I, I think it takes a little bit of homework. There's a lot of financial advisors. There's a lot of these terms, fee-only and fiduciary, and it can get very confusing. And I think, unfortunately, our industry has traditionally focused on in couples, like like a lot of advisors talk to the man, and, and there's this assumption that the man, the relationship makes the financial decisions, which we're, we're well past that point. I think as a consumer, what's really important is don't be afraid to take your time and ask questions. I think almost everybody in the world, unless you're very, you know, are a financial planner, you would benefit from having a conversation with a financial planner. There's expertise and advice that can be provided. But what I hear from a lot of people is I talked to a financial advisor. I really wasn't comfortable or didn't understand what they were saying, but I went ahead anyway, or they wanted me to move forward anyway. If you're not comfortable, if you under, don't understand exactly what some kind of financial recommendation is going to do for you and why that's beneficial to you, give yourself permission to proceed. Ask to be, have it explained again. If the person you're talking to can't explain it in language that you understand, shop around. There's no rush. Right. And and there's enough financial advisors with different business models, different focuses. You have the freedom. It's your life savings. to find somebody that you trust. Spend time with them. Make sure that the process when you're meeting with somebody is multiple meetings. So you have time to kind of digest who they are and their character and do, do their recommendations make sense. If you ever feel pressure, if it's a, like you need to sign paperwork, the first meeting kind of a thing, those are those are red flags I would just you know, don't do anything you're not comfortable with. It's your money. It's not the financial advisor's money. And you have the time to explore. And I think ask, ask questions. How do you get paid? How, what's your meeting process like? How often are we going to talk? If I have a different idea from your recommendation, how are we going to address that? Those kinds of things about how the relationship works are really important. I try to lay that out pretty clearly when I first meet with people. And I don't, you know, my meeting process is several meetings before we become a client. But I, I think for anybody, just, just you're in the driver's seat. So be comfortable, be confident, ask more questions. Don't ever make a decision because of pressure. Make it because you're educated and you're informed and you're confident about what it's going to do for you. I love that. So the first thing is to shop around. The other thing is to make sure it's a good fit. Make sure that you're getting a good vibe from this person. You're able to trust this person. They're asking you the right questions. The third thing is to make sure they explain their fee structure and so that you really understand how they're getting paid so you don't have to worry about the hidden fees that we hear about so much. Right. I'm going to throw in 
my number four, and that is to choose someone who asks you about what a great retirement looks like to you. Not just how much money do you have, but how do you want to spend that money? I would agree. That, that's, that's great. So, David, tell us a little bit more about where we can find you and learn more about you. Yeah, thank you. Um, so the, the firm's name is Next Phase Financial Planning. Our website is www.nextphasefp.com. I work only with people in their 50s and 60s who are within a couple of years of retirement or have just transitioned into retirement. So I focus my practice exclusively on on this period of time and these types of clients and the questions we're talking about. Um, you can find me if you want to learn more about how I think and, and the, the education that I provide. I'm on LinkedIn and active every day. So LinkedIn, David Edmiston. Um, you can check out on my website, we've got I've gotten published in a lot of media articles. So you see me on the Wall Street Journal and Market Watch and different different areas there. And with all of my clients, I offer a free initial con- phone call just to see if we're a good fit. So if it's something that you're exploring, there's no commitment, but I want to learn about you and see if what I do might help you. So you can just schedule a call straight on our website. Your website and your your LinkedIn link in the show notes. Perfect. Okay. Okay. So thank you so much. I really appreciate you being here today. Gayla, thank you so much. It's been a wonderful conversation. I've really enjoyed connecting with you. I hope uh, your audience gets a lot out of this. And I I appreciate the work that you're doing to help people and women get into retirement in a a thoughtful and mindful manner. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you for joining me for this enlightening conversation with David Edmist. I hope you got some insights from this episode that will help to spark your financial planning journey. The key thing that I got out of this conversation is that the path to a great retirement starts with understanding your unique vision for your future. To stay connected with our community of retirement enthusiasts, please be sure to subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions or thoughts or specific topics that you'd like covered in future episodes, please feel free to send me a message. Reach out to me through social media, YouTube, or my website. Your journey to retiring your limits is just beginning, and I'm here to support you every step of the way. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.